Trevino. I'm a licensed physical therapist and certified Pilates instructor. And I'm here today to talk to you about the don'ts of foam rolling. The reason I'm doing this video is because looking around the internet and looking on YouTube specifically, I saw a video the other day of a woman who was showing her posture exercises on the foam roller and telling people how to use a foam roller. And she was totally wrong on all aspects. So I thought eh, I need to talk about this because I've written a book on the foam roller. I consider myself some of an expert. I've been doing foam rolling for over 20 years with clients and teaching people how to use their roller appropriately. So I'm gonna to talk to you today a little bit about the things you should watch and things you should make sure you're not doing when you're on the roller so you don't hurt yourself because that is what we're trying to avoid. We want health. We don't want you to be injured, okay? So the first thing you wanna make sure um, if you're gonna be using a foam roller, um, that is that you structurally can use a foam roller. So if you have kyphosis, a severe upper back rounding, you're very round, laying on a foam roller is probably not gonna be for you, okay? There are ways to do it if you have a slight rounding. I will talk about that in a minute. If you have a severe scoliosis, which is an S curve of the back, this is not gonna be for you, all right? So check that off the box. If you have those problems, the roller is gonna be only used for you for massage. The roller can be used for massage, for postural correction and, and flexibility stretching, and also for exercise. So there's exercise that you can do on the roller to promote um, stability of the spine and also core strength. And that's what my, the exercises for that are all in my book, along with the massage and flexibility. So we wanna really pay attention to our techniques when we're on here for those specific purposes. Okay, first thing, getting on the roller, Get on the roller the right way okay so i'll talk about this type of roller in a second and why i use this type of roller but let's just practice getting on the roller best way to do that is just get your tush close to the edge of the roller and then one hand on the floor push down on the roller lift up roll the roller underneath you okay tailbone's at the end and then you're just gonna lay down one vertebra at a time and if you did that you're gonna land your head's gonna be on and your tail is gonna be on Okay, you want your spine to line up with the roller. Right now I feel like my roller is a little bit crooked. So I would lift up and move it over so that I feel that I'm very balanced and very straight in a nice straight line. That's the first thing you wanna do, all right? This woman that was doing this video, first thing she did when she laid on the roller is straighten her legs, okay? This is not good. If you're laying with your legs straight on the roller, you're overarching your low back, okay? My knee is below my hip. I am hyperextending my low back, making an increased low back curve, which is not a comfortable and not a neutral positioning for the spine when you're on the roller. Always, always, always keep your knees bent when you're on the roller. Feet flat, toes face in the front, okay? The other thing you wanna watch when you're on is that your head is not hanging off the back of the roller, all right? I've seen that. I've actually seen people on the roller, you know, half of their head hanging off. You want the the whole skull on the roller, okay? You want a nice inward curve of your um, neck and a nice inward curve of your low back. So saying that, I've often heard people say, push your back into the roller. Now, yes, during some exercises, we will do that. But if you're just laying on the roller to kind of create a neutral spine or to reset your posture muscles after a long day of working, working out or whatever, to get into a neutral spine, then you wanna just relax. Relax your pelvis and let it be balanced let yourself have a nice inward curve of your lumbar spine so that there's um you feel comfortable all right of course it's going to feel like you're laying on a hard cylindrical surface um, but it should still feel pretty balanced and pretty comfortable to lay in this position okay you also do not want to lay if you have a little bit of rounding in your upper back then your chin is going to be higher than your forehead this is hyperextending your neck so much like when we had our legs straight, we were hyperextending our low back. Here, if our chin is higher than our forehead, we're hyperextending the neck. It puts a lot of pressure on the cervical vertebra, which are very small and very fragile. So you want to, go to keep a, want to keep a nice inward tuck of your chin, okay? And I'll show you how to use this little arch that's down there in a second. If you do have a little bit of rounding, that's kind of inhibiting you from getting into this good um, neck position, all right? Those are the main things when you're just laying in your roller for some of the exercises um, or for doing a, a reset of your posture to get into neutral. To get off your roller, I'd like to address this here too because I often see people just kind of pull up, try to throw themselves up and also, you've just done work, all right, to get yourself in a nice neutral spine, to maintain that. 
getting off the roller, just melt off onto the floor, head and tail kind of landing together. So just think of like your ice cream and you're just melting off the side of the roller. All right, at that point too, you can get a nice release of the muscles. It feels really good. You haven't um, increased any disc pressure to try and get up off the roller. And then of course to sit up, just roll to the side and push up with your elbow to come up to, to your sitting position pretty effortlessly. All right, I have a list here, so make sure I don't forget anything. Um, one of the th other things that you want to really pay attention to too, is that you're not, if you're using the roller for massage, you're not rolling for extended period of, periods of time on one spot, okay? When we find those trigger points or those tight muscle areas or those really tight fascial areas, do one to two minutes. That's all you need. I've heard people, I rolled on it for 20 minutes and the next day I was so sore. Of course you are because you're smashing tissue, you're putting pressure on tissue, you can cause bruising of tissue. So ease up on too long of rolling for massage, a couple minutes on each section, even a minute or less is fine. Um, but don't go overboard. Okay. Don't use a roller that's too hard for you. Okay, so that's where we're gonna talk about this, the roller itself. This is a 36 inch long roller, six inch diameter. Okay, this is a standard size roller. They come in all different densities from very soft to very hard to bumpy <laughs> and textured surfaces for massage. Those are not used for exercise, those are specifically used for massage. This roller I use, I feel is a good all purpose roller. This is the Black Axis Foam Roller by OPTP.com. Um, a lot of benefits for me for this, for my classes. One, it doesn't wear down, okay? So if you're gonna be using it a lot, this is something, or if you're a very tall man, um, very muscul muscular, then you're gonna want this kind of roller because it's not gonna break down on you and get lumpy and deform. I've had some of these, this, these rollers for years and nothing, they're like brand new all the time. It is a denser roller, yes, and it, I feel it is great for massage, but it's also great for exercise. So if we're gonna lay on this and do Pilates exercises, um, it's a nice firm surface um, that we can work on and it's not gonna move around too much and it's not going to change its shape. Softer rollers will move and they'll change their shape just like laying on a mattress, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, if you are very sensitive and you are using the roller for specific just massage, okay? If you have rheumatoid arthritis, any type of arthritis, um, you're gonna want to um, maybe go down to a softer roller and there's different so, you know, like I said, different densities in these rollers, you might have to try a few out. You can always send them back, okay? If you don't like the roller, order a couple, test them out, um, send one back. But those are gonna be a little bit easier on your muscles as you're someone that's very hypersensitive to touch um, or anything like that with fibromyalgia. Um, you might wanna soft with, start with a little softer roller. Those are not to be used though for exercise, to lay on for exercises, okay? You're gonna have a, need a firmer surface if you're gonna exercise on the roller, okay? You can use those for flexibility as well. Um, all right, so now you do have an upper back rounding, but it's not severe, okay? When you lay down, a lot of times in a class, you'll put a little pad under your head, right? To level your head out with the rest of your body. You can do that on the roller as well. You're gonna use this thing, it's called the Pro Roller Arch, and it's really cool because it fits right over the end of your roller, just snaps right on so it's not gonna fall off. Then your head will rest on there. Hopefully your head will come in line with your spine. Now, they don't come in different thicknesses, so yeah, I wish they did. I wish they had different thicknesses of this because sometimes I need just a little bit. At that point, if you get on here and you feel your chin being tucked into your chest and you feel this, then you're, it's too high for you. Then what you'd wanna do is just double up a towel or something, put that over the end of your roller just to level your head out. Because may, when you're on that roller, you just don't want that head high, chin higher than your forehead because you're hyperextending the neck. Okay, again, you're gonna cause damage into the cervical vertebra. You don't want that. Okay, and I think that's it. Oh, no, there's one more. Don't try to use a short roller. These come in different lengths as well. And there's one that's a half roller. I think it's even less than, I think it's like 18 inch um, roller, same size. Those are, for, those are portable. Those are to take with you if you're a dancer, athlete, something, shove them in your bag. They're not meant to lay on, like I just laid on this roller for posture. Don't lay on it just for your upper back or anything like that. Um, you need the whole length of your spine, your head and tailbone to be supported. So those small little short rollers, again, are just meant for massage and flexibility. They're not meant to be laid on for exercise or changing your shape of your spine, okay? So I hope that's helpful. Watch what you watch out there on YouTube. Make sure that the person giving you advice has credentials. I am telling, I would like to tell everybody, stay in your lane. Please, please, please don't give advice about the body, posture, discs, 
anything like that, if you're already not educated in that area and you don't know the research and you don't know, you're talking to a lot of people out there. So if you're out there and you're putting these videos up, make sure um, you know what you're talking about or at least have somebody that you can reference that does. And people that are just watching for fitness advice, same thing, make sure the people have the credentials in the box down below. Look and see what people are trained in so that you know that you're getting good advice. Don't want you to get hurt because injuries can really interfere with your daily life, right? So if I hope you found this helpful, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments box below. I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps me to get some views here on YouTube. I'm a relatively small channel, mostly making my videos for my clientele that are in the local area. Um, but love to be out there and meet people that are across the United States or in other countries. So drop us some information down below if you'd like a video on something specific. And if you'd like to join one of my classes online or see me for a private consult, all that information is in the description box below. So thanks for joining me today. Have a great day. Bye.